a great day in the hood today on this May 2nd I got an idea let's all hop in the vehicle and make something of it so let's get the road on the show about 12.02 p.m. as we set out. Today we'll be using a route I first discovered back in 1980. In fact, part of our route will involve the road that predates the National Pike. Well, for a short spell, anyway. Getting off at this exit, Security Boulevard, the location of the social security complex for the entire country, I guess you would say. So if you're on federal benefits, here's where we all begin. Yep. The SSA is up here somewhere. As they say, the SSA is okay. And now on Fairbrook Road, the road that will take us to the National Pike's predecessor. Haven't passed this way in 35 years. Hope I don't miss my road, miss my turn. And now we're southbound on Johnny Cake Road. Still heading for the Pike's predecessor. And more new stuff blowing up. I guess nothing is sacred anymore. Last I passed, that was all woods. And again, getting into all the curves. And this is Hollifield Road. Yes, that's what it is. Now crossing the Tapsco River. Now Pedri Cross, CSX. You have the former b and Old Main Line. The former Old Main. This country's first railroad. And up ahead here, part of what was the Pike's predate, so to speak. But back then it was a stop sign here not a circle. I'm now officially on the road that predates the National Road. I just passed US 29, which runs from here to Pensacola, Florida, as I keep saying. And we've already come 30 miles. How about that? Still, much has changed since my last pass. All these plantations and things went up. Plantations, whatever. At the light, Marriottsville Road. Still rather interesting. How many different routes west there were before the coming of Interstate 70? About five different routes. But this was the road before the coming of the National Pike.
Wouldn't mind doing that, though. I used to always do that. All the time. Literally. A lot of those folks out today. Wish I could join them. I want to tie the road bore through the woods there or something. Way back when. Then swung back up to here. But that part's been erased out. But here at Route 97, I make a right, then a left, to get back on the bike's predecessor. Just made my right, and up here make my left. My connection to the predecessor. Just a connecting road here, put into the time that I-70 was built. But, up around the bend, the road would have come out of there on the left. I said it swung back up, and was up here again. Now we're back on it. Back on the Pike's predecessor. But, much development took place since my last pass. Unfortunately. But, here's how folks got around, at one time. But today the road's popular with bikers. My kind of bikers. And one more circle that wasn't here 30 years ago. I made it. Here at this spot, the old pike used to, again, bend that direction, but removed. I went that way, cut it to the new pike. The current pike, whatever. So this part of the road, again, was built, and they built I-70 as a connection. So, no history on this part of the road. I guess they put this in to maintain through traffic so that you don't bounce around too much between the, old, the original Pike and I-70. I'm confused too. Up there at the curve, the road came out of the left before 70 cut it off, and this road becomes it as we curve. And again, the CSX old main line. The line once ran down here, where the driveway to the left is, up that driveway there. Back in the inclined plane days, if you know what that means. And once again, and now we're ascending Pars Ridge and arriving in Mount Airy, the top of the ridge. Yeah, this road dead ends downtown, so I'll turn left to pick up the current National Pike. And now we're on the modern day National Pike. And new stuff still going up. Even in this old town. And now descending the west side of the ridge. And up ahead, the one time B&O, 
Mount Airy branch. I've been down there. I wouldn't do it now, though. Interesting old buildings, though. Interesting on those old parts to the previous route to the National Pike. Different pieces of road there. I guess it was all gerrymandered together, you could say. Good word, gerrymandered. Pieces put together. But this became the Pike eventually. A bit straighter. Just a bit. Before US-40 and I-70 replaced it. Or supplanted it, whatever. And I'm now passing through a place called Plane Number 4. After the fourth and final inclined plane over Pars Ridge that the B&O first had before they built the tunnel. Also, this was US-40 for a while before they built the four-lane highway that became I-70. For about 20 years, this was US-40. Now arriving in Newmarket. Established 1789. And downtown, New Market. Back before the Civil War, there was a heavy slave trade here, unfortunately. And behind me, there's a platform where the slaves stood to be bought. Kind of a sad history there for the town, but what do you do? That was then, this is now. And they pardon you, Market. Back into the spaces. At least between here and Frederick. Whatever space there's left. Up there, distant mountains. And now on a part of the road that one time served as US 40 before being rerouted. Part of the original pike across the way there. This part once served as US 40 before being rerouted. Old road still there, but the two will join soon. Obviously, all four lanes at one time. Before going any further, I thought I'd stop and show you the Genie Bottle one more time. Airplane ahead. Anyway, I've shown it to you before. And now arriving in Frederick. Founded 1745. For you trivia buffs out there. Well, it's almost Ellicott City-like. Who's famous from here? Francis Scott Key, that's who. Enough places up here named after him. And they're out of the downtown area. With Catoctin Mountain in the distance. Well, not too distance. We'll soon cross it. At this point, it's officially US-40. The original pike bore off up there. You can almost make it out. But in keeping with 1980s tradition, I'll stay on this road, US-40. original route that away, but this is the 1948 reroute. 
our 1980s route. I'm now ascending Catoctin Mountain. Now at the very top, and about to descend. In the distance, South Mountain. Now it's 1.55 p.m. And come about 70 miles. There is our road. I'm now ascending South Mountain. Those folks there on the left are parked to check out the Appalachian Trail that passes here. On the top of the mountain. And down the other side. In past videos, I told you about the streetcar line used to pass along here. It used to follow those tall poles there. The Frederick to Hagerstown trolley line. I'll explain in past videos. Approaching Route 66, but not the one you think. Again, these tall poles mark the old streetcar line from Frederick to Hagerstown. Would have passed here as well. We're at 226 right now. Made a pit stop a little ways back, but didn't get it on camera. And we've come around 87 miles as we enter Hagerstown. Founded 1762. And downtown Hagerstown. Up there passes a Western Maryland Railway line. Now I guess Norfolk Southern runs it, or CSX. Former station to the left. Now it's a pigsty. I mean police station. Police station. Excuse me. And now departing Hagerstown. Up ahead, the old hiking out of the left. And up here we join it. And both routes become one. Once and for all. At least for a while. Yep. Around the bend, back on the original route. Yep, both routes are now one. Another part of the old alignment here, which I'll get off and show you. Because down here there's an historic bridge. Let's go check it out. And there it is. Historic Wilson Bridge. Completed 1819. The current US 40 bridge is here to the south. And we'll soon be crossing that. And here's the bridge's top side, looking west. Again, the current bridge to the south. And looking north, up the creek. That's Kanakachik Creek. More history from your bullfrog.
I'm not crossing the bridge we were just looking at. This bridge was completed in 1937. When they fixed this road and took out some curves. Some curves, but not all. Here is a realigned part of the original road. Part of the original route right there, original pavement. Below St. Paul's Church. But Interstate 70 parallels us to the left about a mile. Although here, you really can't tell on this peaceful road. But there's a freeway to the left over there someplace. And up here we enter Clear Spring. One more time. Last time we passed through here, we came the other way. And up here on the left someplace, there's a spring that gave this town its name. The Clear Spring, somewhere. One of these days, I'll stop and look for it. In front of us, Tuscarora. What you see here is a great view when there's snow on the ground. Not a bad view now, though. And now ascending Tuscarora. Before the coming of 70, this was it. He yeah, is still ascending, but almost at the top. And now, over the top. Now passing through Indian Springs. Up here, we're put onto I-70 for a bit because there is a route that ends into the mountain. From here to Hancock, we have to use I-70. And here's where we get off to pick up the original pike again. And here it is, as we're put back onto it. But that way it dead ends, don't be fooled. We're now entering Hancock, formerly known as North Bend. And here's downtown Hancock. This is Maryland's narrowest point. Maryland's skinniest point. On the bridge passes US 522. North to the right, south to the left. As we depart Hancock. Now around 3.32 p.m. on this somewhat curvy road. And we've come almost 116 miles. Over there, Round Top Hill. I'm trying. Yeah, there it is. Down here, the old and the new. There's a route over here, and the current route, I-68, is right through there somewhere. 
there it is. Yeah, there. We'll take the original route this way. As you saw in my National Plate documentary, assuming you watched it, and now we're ascending Sidling Hill. Up there is the cut, which will pass through on our return route. But for now, this part of the road is known as the Scenic 40. Yep. The road at one time would have come out of the left there, the old, old road, and then zigzagged up the mountain somehow. But now I can't tell where it zigzagged. But before 1900, it's exact up the mountain, somewhere around here. And up here are the famous flashing lights a lot of folks seem to know about. The world famous flashing lights. The top of the mountain. Now descending up ahead, I'll turn left to get back on the original route, the one that zigzagged over the mountain on the other side. Would have come down here someplace, and then go on to the left where I'm about to go. Oh, there it is. There's the gate over it. Maybe it came out of there one time when it zigzagged. And this is the route that came later, the one we're going down to. But this here is part of the zigzag at one time. And here the zigzag would have ended, and it would have bent to the right. But they rerouted it after 1900, and here's the reroute. Closed up that way though. But continuing this way. Up until 1957, this was the road. Oh, what happened there? As they say, keep the home fires burning. And those folks took it seriously. Yet before 1957, here's how folks got around. Oh, within my lifetime, this was the road. Here we cross Sidling Hill Creek. Over there again, the current route. When they built that route, they tried putting this one back together, so to speak. They tried to put the old road back together. Again, the current route, Interstate 68, our return route. Here I turn right and then left to regain the original route. Continuing on Scenic 40. But at one time, at the bottom of the hill, it looked totally different when the road bore off the main highway. The highway was two lanes at the time, now it's four lanes. But it bore off right there, then came this way, the way we're about to go. And now back on the official National Pike. We're now passing through Belgrove. Not much to it though.
I'm ready for our next mountain ascent. And here it is, Town Hill. And up here, at the top, we'll check out the overlook. And a view from the overlook. That's looking back east towards Sidling Hill. And there's the cut in the distance, trying to get it there. Panning to the south. Interesting valley down there, sort of. And across the road, the historic Town Hill Hotel. I was offered a tour of that place once. But because of time, I had to turn it down. I've been kicking myself in the behind ever since. We'll soon continue west. And now descending Town Hill. And now crossing over. Green Ridge. I'm now about to cross 15 Mile Creek. I believe it's named because it's 15 miles from Cumberland and 15 miles from Hancock. How about that? We'll take the original route here. Stay on the Scenic 40, whatever they call it now, 144. And of course, there might be a sign that says, 15 miles to the Love Shack. Never mind, I tried. Crossing over Interstate 68. This is part of the original route that was put back together when they made that into a freeway there. The old road would have straddled the freeway before the freeway was there. And then it come off and picked up right up here at that slight bend. So as of this bend, back on the original route, with some original stuff along it. And now it's 4.12 p.m. And we've come almost 136 miles. I'm still in the original route here. Now we're ascending Polish Mountain. And here we are at the top. And the valley down there somewhere. I don't know why they call it Polish Mountain. I think it's steeper on one side than it is on the other. And the truckers began calling it that. But even on the map, it says Polish Mountain. So you got me. And more curves as you wind down it. We're now passing through Gilpin. But up here, the old, old road ends 
I gotta pick up its replacement. But even that got replaced. Yes, even the replacement got replaced. Oh well. But anyway, I'm not coming into a place called Flintstone. Yes, that's what it's called. As I keep saying over and over, you can't make up stuff like this. Here's more proof. Oh, look at that. I'll take it. But my own castle. Another one. I'm the business district, so to speak. Before they built that freeway there, wherever it is, this was the route, the pre-1990 route. And now we're ascending Martin Mountain, Martin Mountain. We're doing the main route down there. As we continue down the reconnected original route. And again, more mountains. And now the current route is again to our right. Yeah, this road crosses it several times between here and Cumberland. And there's the modern day highway up on that bridge. This was the route before that was built. Everyone came this way. In fact, when they're putting through the new highway, there are people here who own businesses that had to close down because no more traffic. There's some stuff there that used to thrive before that new freeway was built. And the folks had businesses complained that they would lose their business because nobody would be coming this way anymore. Well, look, they were right. Who's here? Nobody but me. But at this point, this road would have blended onto the current route there. See how they line up. Although down here, it's still just mentioned the old road. But it dead ends at the next stop sign. Here's where it ends, but it kept going at one time, as you can see. Part of the old grade over there, if you can make it out. The rumble strips. Got to pick up I-68 for a couple of blocks. Took it to old Route 40 again, to the pike. Little cool mountains up there. But up here, the exit for the original pike. Now it's alternate 40. The main 40 follows 68. And then back on the original pike. And entering Cumberland. The Queen City of the Alleghenies, as it's called. In fact, the train station was known as Queen City Station. Until they tore it down anyway. Not much changed here. I guess that's good. And down there, CSX is passing. And there, too. Oh, got a run by. How about that?
that there is their Pittsburgh line. A little ways up, the Cincinnati line splits off. Over there, the Cumberland narrows, which will soon pass through. But first, I want to see if I can find something. Some place is a way to get to the top of the mountain to a place called Lover's Leap. There's a driveway somewhere leading to it. Going off on the left. I found the road and turned up it, but apparently can't drive all the way up. The gate's closed, but I guess you could walk if you wanted. But up there is Lover's Leap at the top. Okay, up at 9 to 5 weekdays. I'll keep that in mind. Now backing out because I can't turn around. That's different. Now heading back out. Heading back down to the pike. Haven't seen this area since 1982. Yeah, that far back since I was last here in this hood. Yes, I'm passed through here in almost 40 years. This part still looks the same, though. And the bridge is the curtain, US 40. We'll alter that 40 at this point. And then here again, of course, CSX. That's their Pittsburgh line there. And up ahead, turning right, back on the original pike. But up right in the bend, we meet up with the reroute, coming out of the right there at that traffic light. The road that was over the bridge we just passed under comes out of there. And they were both one again, both are one route. And over there is the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad Railway. Don't know if they're running right now though. And up here, we cross Wills Creek. And passing through the Cumberland Narrows. There's a caveway up there someplace, and there's Lover's Leap, where I would have gone if the driveway was open, believe it or not. Anyway, Cumberland Narrows. I'm gonna pick up Route 36 here for some variety. Get the Western Maryland Trestle, built circa 1905. If a variety, take this route to Frostburg. Heard of bikes here a couple times too. That's CSX again. The Pittsburgh line that parallels for a while. Drink Carganville. Now about 5:01 p.m. and almost 160 miles, 160. We'd ride our bikes this way because it's an easier grade than taking Route 40. Route 40 is steeper, 
pointing towards Frostburg than this road is. This road is longer, but Route 40 is steeper. I'm not passing through Barrelville. As I said again, can't make that up. And now we're coming into Mount Savage. The former Cumberland and Pennsylvania Railroad had a yard here along with its offices. I'll see if I can find anything. Still, love those old gas stations. No, don't be fooled by that name. Don't be fooled. Anyway, Pearson Place would have been the yard. Hard to believe there were tracks there at one time. And apparently this building must belong to the railroad. And right there, the old office building for the Cumberland and Pennsylvania Railroad. Long defunct. I believe most of these buildings were railroad related back in the day. But our tracks long pulled up. Not departing Mount Savage. Obviously, I hope. This looks a lot like a road I've never seen before. It looks a lot, a lot like that, like something unseen. Lots of old relics here, though. Whatever you want to call that. I think it is my first time over this road. I'm on a road I think I have been on before. I'm not coming into a place called Zillman. Also known as Allegheny Station. And the pier a tunnel beneath the Western Maryland Railway. Just pass through. Now arriving in Frostburg. And now we're stopped by the former Frostburg station of the Cumberland and Pennsylvania Railroad. Tourist trains from Cumberland still run here, but now with the COVID thing going on. Don't know how often they run. And over here is the turntable where they turn the locomotives around. And way back there in the distance, the old Frostburg Tunnel, last used in 1972. And again, our turntable. Yes, indeed, a one time busy place. Not sure the trains are running right now, but I did a video posted on YouTube of a train ride up to here. You may want to watch it. There's even a carriage museum here for all those in a Conestoga mood. Conestoga, is that a word? It's 
So I guess from this point, head back to the city. Being it's almost 5.40 p.m., about a three hour drive back. They have everything here. And now to wind up the mountain to downtown Frostburg, which I can see from here. Original Pike again, now alternate US 40. Turn left to head back east. Heading back east on the pike. Of course, I'm gonna pick up the freeway when I can. Normally we're going the other direction on this road, towards Western Maryland, or further Western Maryland. Because now we're in Western Maryland. I'm confused too. Got a freeway connection here. I'm now heading for our connection with Interstate 68, which should be right up here. I hope. Yeah, it is. We're going east towards Cumberland and Baltimore. My guess, mileage, 160. And maybe about three hours, give or take. And now we're east on Interstate 68. The highway I last showed you. I don't remember when I last showed you this. It's been a while. So look again. Got a 6% downgrade here, so got to be a bit careful. So it says truck speed 45. I hope there are no trucks because the main limit is posted at 70 miles an hour. If I encounter a truck, it won't be too cool. Back in 82, I took a night shot here of all the lights. And that's ascending into Cumberland. Again. Oh, Medical cool. marijuana. All right. Medical marijuana, huh? That would explain how come folks drive the way they do out here, why they keep speeding. Anyway. And now we're sending out of Cumberland, passing a slow truck. No passing lane here for trucks, but eventually there'll be one. And already, 15 miles from Frostburg. We just crossed Martin Mountain again. And after sending the other side, and over there is the road we took on the way out. And again, Flintstone. As I keep saying, you can't make up stuff like that. And again up there, Polish Mountain. I wonder if the story about how it got the name is accurate. But that's what I was told. Wildlife, watch for it and stay alert. Make me a 
and again crossing Town Hill. Although this road takes a lower summit than the old road. Here it's elevation 962. On the old road, it's elevation 1680. Quite a bit higher. And again, there's Sidling Hill. We were up there last, on the last road, on the way out, whatever. And again, about to ascend it. And are approaching the Sidling Hill cut. And about to pass through. Back in 2016, we stopped here and I showed it to you. Even a couple of coal veins there. We stopped there at the visitor center. We're now descending the other side. An occasional good view. And up here, by on I-70 for the rest of the trip back to the city. Just bypassed Hancock. On the mountainside, you can make it the grade of the old road. That's where US-40 US ran before 70 was put here. And now it's almost 7.30 p.m. As we get past the Hagerstown area, we passed through it earlier. On the most 79 miles from Frostburg, where we turned around. 79 miles. Total trip mileage so far, 249. And again made a 10 minute pit stop that I did not document. And again up ahead, South Mountain. We crossed it earlier. And now about to ascend it again. Here at the top, the Appalachian Trail and descending the other side. With speeders. They get off the medical marijuana. That's your problem. And there's a Catoctin Mountain. We crossed that earlier too. by passing Frederick. We passed through it earlier. And departing the Frederick area as we begin losing light. And now it's 7.52 p.m. and 109 miles from Frostburg. The rest of our route, you've all seen often enough. So, I'll be shooting video very sparingly till we get back. I guess I can word it like that. And again, ascending Pars Ridge and bypassing Mount Airy. Earlier, we passed through it. And now our total mileage is almost 292. Now that's a healthy odyssey, isn't it? Definitely getting dark now as we traverse 
the Piedmont Plateau, whatever this is called, this physiographic region. On that sign, a place I think I heard of, Baltimore. Never mind, I tried. And up here, merging onto our local freeway, Baltimore's Beltway. We're in the right church, but not in the right pew yet. Good way to put it. Lots of traffic on this Sunday night. And up here is the exit for our part of the world. 158 miles later. Yep, suburbia. Yep, Erbia. Hey, we did it. Another day odyssey. We actually did it. So once again, all my faithful viewers, thank you very much for the privilege of your time. And again, encouraging everybody to get their vaccination and stay safe. And as the Beatles once said, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Just thought I'd throw that in. 